Yeah, everything's always on tone, Dad. What did my little cousin want? <laughs> Welcome to the Latoya Jackson. <laughs> Welcome to Download and Believe. Welcome. Would you watch her podcast? No, I don't think I want to see anything with Latoya Jackson. You would not listen to her podcast. I would. I would listen to like an episode to see what she's doing, but I don't think it'd be like something interesting. Like, what would she talk about? Like, maybe she. She would definitely have to talk pop culture. Thread counts. No, she's going to talk about her her um, Whole food shopping list, a psychic and network, like her something. makeup routine, and that's what she's the peptides talk about. that are in this skin cream mm-hmm. formula. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome mm-hmm. to Download and Delete episode seventeen. Welcome. I am Ty Muncy here. Innovative and creative anything I put my mind to. And I'm Shauna Lucas. Welcome. And today we are joined. We are interfacing with the man behind the scenes. <laughs> La producer y'all. Very meta of us. There, there you go. I am actually legitimately on the mic this week. Yes. It's yes. Be a behind the scenes. Yes. I'm still going to be behind the scenes. Yes. So y'all not, if y'all watching the live, y'all not going to see me. But you're watching it on my page, so you don't need to see me. But anyway. Jack of all yeah. trades. There it is. Man, I'm so tired. Mm-mm. See, I don't want to be a jack of all trade. I want to be a master of one. Oh, so. you know, I love no, that. No, I think you need to be a jack. I think you need to be a jack of all trades in no, order to make it these days. There's like, nothing wrong with wanting to specialize. Yeah. No, but you can't make it just being a master of one. You now. can't. You do need to know how to wear you all the diversify. hats <laughs> because that's how you keep yourself relevant. Your like a company up. won't follow won't won't fire you if you can do multiple jobs. Exactly. You know. Yeah, but then there's this conversation about faking it till you make it. I've been reading recently, like people think that's that. okay. Like, no, that's not. Because then you get put in a okay. position where it's like, okay, we, we heard you can do. Like, for an example, I had someone who hired me one time to uh, do the audio production for uh, their concert. Okay. Now, this is when I first started doing it, and that was like, I kind of want to take it because I said that I can do audio and visual production, Mm -hmm. but I was like, nah, I'm not. This is too big of an undertaking. I don't have what I need right now. So I recommended somebody else, but I was like, you know what? I probably just missed out on maybe a thousand dollars. Yeah, missed your blessing. I think if you know what you're doing, or if you, I think first of all, you should like volunteer to see somebody do it, and then like ask questions while you're doing it, and then like join in and help them around, and then maybe the next time. And that's what I ended up doing the next time, like for that event. That makes. I was there, you Mm -hmm. know, to be the liaison between the two, and I learned it was like I could have done this. Mm. I would have had to do it a little bit differently than the way this person did it, but I could still pull it off. Yeah. It wouldn't have been the greatest, but I think it would have been you. And that's just it. I didn't want my first time doing something to be mediocre. Oh. How long ago was that? How long have you been doing this stuff? Overall, I've been doing this for about, it'll be 10 years come April. Mm. So you did this Mm -hmm. after the devastation of Wells Fargo. <laughs> Funny thing. Okay, because you, you, you would understand. This is a little background story. Little background. Background. Been so first of all, me and Tyler, we used to work together back yes. in the Washington Mutual, Mutual slash Wells Fargo Fargo, years. Yes. I got fired from my job for attendance. Shout out to all the Wells Fargo people. <laughs> Wait, like here. lateness or like no show? I don't this or story. No, no. What happened was <laughs> when Wells Fargo took over for Washington Mutual, their attendance policy was different in the way Washington Mutual was. Basically, you can murder somebody and do 30 years in when jail, I say, came back and still had your job. While move was, you can be at work <laughs> and say, I got a headache, and put, like, I'm going to go home, put PTO in, and just get it from and your just desk get up and, and leave. go home. Like, <laughs> that's how dope it was. That's how it was. So when Washington Mutual turn, came in, it was like, uh-uh, this, this shit got to change. Yes. So they backdated it, it, it. anybody who was more than oh, 15 minutes order. late. Mm-hmm. That so that be, put yes. me over the restriction but because i didn't want to just let people go because i actually was good at my job it was like okay you get a little elbow room you can't be late for like 30 days car broke down mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i came into work miss linda had to let me go shout out to linda's dukes yes. uh she was like probably the greatest coordinator ever in any Love job mm-hmm. um she had to let me go so i don't even remember that I remember when <laughs> Are you talking about the the the, tech, the uh the note? Yes <laughs> I never that, told you that That's how I got fired the second time. I don't even did you get fired for that? I got they had to. I, 
I don't even think you cared. I, at that point in time, I did because it took too it long. It was a 50 cent song out. <laughs> you know, I don't know what this man was doing, but in the notes, I'm like helping a customer and I see like all these 50 cent lyrics. It was like, what's up? Okay, so was, what it was, you remember they did, they did not take the restrictions. It was like in the club. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was in the club. So we were able to still be on social media back then. So I don't know what was going on. Me and my, we was having a conversation and I copied and pasted the lyrics <laughs> over there. But what I didn't do was I, I copied and pasted to my notes as well too, which got posted to the account. Yes. They, you can't delete the notes once they oh get on there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you can only like type another like wrote an error right. on the next line. But it was what it was that was just like, nah. Oh, you just, no. So, so it's like if a customer call and asks for a printout of their notes on the account, they're going to have, have, they gonna have it <laughs> in the club. <laughs> they could have deleted their note. I, I feel like they could have. They just didn't want to. I was technically a temp at that point, so it was like, uh uh-uh, uh, you gotta go. When I tell you, I don't even remember this woman's name who was my supervisor, but she was so fucking devastated at me. <laughs> yes. Like, she went from being like praising my greatness to, yes. I don't even wanna see your face. Cause oh. it was like, did this really happen? <laughs> 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 Tiffany was just like, they're not gonna let you go. Like, yes, they are. I was like, you can't. No, 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 they're not gonna fire you, to Tiffany. They're gonna fire me, fam. But I've already accepted it worked it. out. Everything happens for a reason. So after losing that job, um, I was kind of went to depression for a minute. And Ooh. yeah, because like I had that was like two opportunities I lost. I think unemployment was super fucking high at the time, so I couldn't oh. tell you when I was gonna get another job. Oh. Uh, so I went to the depression. Me and my brother was like talking and we realized we have a lot of random conversations mm-hmm. that could be very entertaining. So we said, you know what, bro, let's just let's record this. Let's just do this. Get this out your system so you don't sit here and get to a suicidal point. Mm-hmm. So we started off doing that. Then when we realized that we bought this service on Blog Talk Radio, because that's all you could do back there, we had like six more days that nobody was doing nothing. So I reached out to some people that I knew. I reached out to Dia. Uh, I hit up Tasha. My girl. Hit up Lexi. Um, and, you know, I was like, hey, this is your day. Three hours, do what you want. Let's go. And it literally been from there. Then all of a sudden, the Switchblades, which is a, a punk alternative rock group out of Detroit, they came as a okay. guest on Lexi's show one day. And they says, hey, Tom, what, what would we have to do if we want to start our own show? I was like, shit, take Thursday. <laughs> that's all you got to do, and it just it it went from there. Um, it's good, Simon. I don't know what the, what, 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 the what, what is the drink of the day? <laughs> what it is? It's okay, good. It's so citrusy. It's Bacardi Limon oh, and regular Limon oh. and um, like a grapefruit situation. Everyone in this room is of age where we can drink whenever yes. we want to yeah. and not feel bad about it because no. in Japan it's it, afternoon right it now. Is, it is afternoon. It is sure. now. And it's Sunday. Time, time went up an hour. So time okay, so hour. I'm confu- I was so confused. I thought I was in a like Me time too. warp. I thought or it something. happened today, but it I happened. Ha- it did happen today, but it happened at two a.m. Yeah, it always happens at night. Okay, I so I had no clue, and I woke up and my alarm clock was wrong. But then the and then the, the stove yeah, clock was my wrong, stove was wrong. But then my phone was right, and I'm like, I had to Google what time it is, which is weird. <laughs> Always go based on the time on your phone. Yeah, I, what time is it? But my phone has been wrong before when I've crossed over time zones. It mm. didn't ever. It didn't Google. switch back correctly. It was weird, crossed and I had to go in time. and do something like mm. yeah, some settings. You probably glitch. had to update your GPS. It was something weird. I don't know. I don't know, but anyway. Well, like every show, we like to start with a motivational moment. Tone, that was real motivational, your start. That mm-hmm. was kind of dope. Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody wondered how I started doing this, and that's why I was depressed. I don't know. <laughs> mostly, no, real. People it's a really good be, outlet, though. People be thinking that I started this because I seen a lane I want to get money. You like, I don't do money. this for money. I don't think. The only well, not reason, like that, but yeah, the see, only like, reason the why money's involved now is because I got bills. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't pay for it by myself You got them anymore. kids to feed. Mm-hmm. Not and even it, that. It's just a simple, like, the stuff to keep the everyday business oh, yeah, running. It takes I can't time. cover with my money yeah. anymore like I used to because we grew too big 
over well, the last year. I think now since you finna get since you and your wife finna get that stimulus, <laughs> that, good, uh, that stimulus. They going they going to the Disney. Daughters. They going uh, to Disney World with their stimulus. Mm-hmm. I'm think, going to Atlanta with mine. Mm-hmm. I think y'all ought to delete me to uh, <laughs> a discount. A discount. <laughs> y'all already got a discount. Y'all got grandfathered in at the original price. I know. Oh, we good. Hey, we okay. Chill over here. That's why. Shana, what you got? What you want to motivate today? It's brief. I just I'm motivated by the signs of spring. Oh, hey, man. You know, it's been like 55 degrees. I know I talk about the weather too much like an old lady on here all the time. (laughs) Everybody is concerned. This is Wisconsin. We are concerned about the the weather. We keep tabs of the weather. We do. We're upset. It's going to snow tomorrow, but I have. What? Yeah. It's going to be less than an inch of snow, but it's going to snow. But if we lived in Colorado, y'all, this would be like a normal occurrence. Well, aren't they shutting down in Colorado? Are they? I I heard. They're shutting down for because it's it's just like a snow emergency, like one of those things. How are they not prepared? It's Colorado. It's Col- that's well, mountain. I mean, like shut down, like no flights kind of thing. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, oh. yeah. They're not like some southern states that can't handle anything. In Colorado, right? Ooh. <laughs> I, I lived in Colorado for like Ooh, six months. I would live there. I would, love I would to. totally live in Colorado. Tashika lives there. I know. Yes, that's mm-hmm. my girl. My mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it for me. All right. Um, I'm motivated um, by just. You know, um, having a new day, a new opportunity to start over and just be a different me and be a better me. Um, you learn from mistakes you made yesterday, which I don't think I made many yesterday. But, I, not, <laughs> not, not yesterday. I, I don't think so. Um, even just like little stuff, like letting stuff bother you or, you know, just like little stuff get to you. Like yesterday I went to Applebee's with my friends and... First of all, there was nobody in there. So I called and the girl told me it was going to be like a 25 minute wait. So then we get there and they're like, it's a 45 minute wait. So I'm like, okay, blather and blather skites. I go to the Goodwill that's around there and drop my clothes off. I'm like, okay, I can kill two birds in one stone. We get in there. Ain't nobody in this store. So y'all talking about we can't eat for 45 minutes, but there's nobody in here. Anyway, we get there. The guy walks us in. I'm sorry, but I have dreadlocks, but still. He had the nappiest looking hair, a dingy black outfit on, dragging his feet. I'm like, look, I vibe off energy. I'm going to keep my energy and let you stay in yours. But uh, it's hurting here. I'm empathic. You're giving me too much. (laughs) Anyway, so we sit down. Our waitress is cool. She has event lashes on, though. I'm like, why are you being a waitress with event lashes? That's a norm, though, these days. I know. Ooh, like, what is gosh. it? What? Event t- lashes, like the lashes oh, that the, look like, <laughs> you know, when the girls the have lashes. Okay. Yeah, the um, like, stage, hey. theater, Broadway you like, lashes. Girl, you got all joggers. Why do you have event lashes mm. on? Like, okay, anyway, but that's the thing now. So, anyway, she's a good, nice waitress at first. You know, I think she's from New Orleans because she has a really good accent. Anyway, they order food. I order a salad because I had just had a wrap. So I'm like, I feel bad. I'm fat. I'm going on a diet anyway. I order a salad. They order salads and pasta. So, you know, when you when you do that, anybody in service knows when the salads come to the table, if somebody's ordered a salad, bring them their salad, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. right. the entrees are going to come up right after the people get by the time they eat half of their salad. So my, I could have ate my half while they're eating their pasta. You know, mm-hmm. I want to look. They are skinny. I want to look skinny, too. <laughs> Let me eat mine. They bring their salads. My salad is still not here. Because they bringing it out with the pasta. If that's what their intentions was, <laughs> sweetheart, you have made a mistake. You know, your first mistake was going to Applebee. <laughs> <laughs> that was your mistake. That was your you mistake. Applebee's on a nice Saturday. <laughs> I know. Okay, Applebee's first of all, we during Chili's. Stimmy time. Uh, we went in to West Chili's. Milwaukee. I know. Uh. I know. We went to Chili's and Chili's was stimulated down. Uh, they had a, a oh, hour yeah. wait. Everybody was there because they got the three for ten, girl. We was trying to get the hookup. Dude, Everybody we, who was with me, we had not gotten our stimuluses yet. We have not gotten it. So we went to IHOPs yesterday. When I tell you, I did curbside pickup and even the curbside pickup spot yeah, was parked. Oh hell, yeah. no. it was wild. Yeah, like I had bananas. to literally park down the street to walk to IHOP. Now, this is the one on um, Brewer's Way. No, yes. <laughs> Hank Aaron Way. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all is mad about that Miller Park. No, it's funny because if you it go is. Greenfield, it still says Miller Park Way. And don't nobody know the difference now. It still Especially say Miller Park. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It only says Brewer Way on the freeway yeah. sign. They didn't fix the street no. sign. But when I'm telling you, it was just crazy it's packed crazy for no reason. everywhere. The dollar store was packed yesterday. Anyway, I ended up canceling my salad. <laughs> 
Cute. And we walking out because you know how I am. But I did not go off. So commend myself for not going off. And I said all that to say I want to be better today because I didn't go off yesterday. But today I think I would have been a little bit more patient and waited for my salad. And then maybe it would have been free even though she did give me the salad to go. But I was like, I don't want that spit up salad. <laughs> when it's a, you don't want a salad when it's a go because at that point it's all soggy. It's going to be all soggy. And then you complain so you don't know what they did. Right. That's why I was like, I don't want that spit up salad so now. Your salad and right. Dropped it and, and, it and put it back <laughs> right. in. The- put it on the floor and raked it through. No, I'm and then good. put vinaigrette on it so you don't I, notice the difference. I went home and ate uh. something on my refrigerator. Thanks, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I had time for all that, but I said that to say, you know, I just want to really be a better person than I was yesterday. Not that I was a bad person, but maybe I could have been a little bit more patient and waited and got, you know, my services free. Even though I got them free, I still would have gotten them free with, you know, that's you a moving, good goal. But you moving yeah. in the right direction. Thank so you. You Thank recognize. You. That's right. You didn't spaz. I that's recognize. Start. That's right. That's I it. recognize. That's a start. That's a good start. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all motivated me. <laughs> Y'all ready to jump into these downloads? We got some stuff to get off our chest. Yeah. Let's go. Hey, show it let me. Shana, what you downloading today? What you ooh. got on your mind? Oh, oh, sorry. Boom, tablets. shake, shake, shake the room. Banana. Sorry, this thing is kind of janky, but okay. um, so I'm just going to talk about what I love to talk about. Okay. And I would wonder if y'all knew about this because I found this out recently. I don't know. Maybe I'm not reading enough. I'm sure Tom knows about it. I'm sure. <laughs> I know he. Know about I know. Anything. I know he will. He didn't know about. He didn't know about what I'm going to download about. But yeah. We'll okay. So I've been um, doing some researching about the 2022 election and the Senate race in Wisconsin. And I don't know if y'all heard about who, the race because um, it's going to be a really important race. Uh, it's the U.S. Senate seat that Ron Johnson holds right now. Yeah, I've been seeing stuff about Ron Johnson. Okay, so Ron Johnson is a, is a hot mess. But anyway, before I talk about him, um, <laughs> I just I wondered if y'all knew that the – the senior vice president of the Bucks is running against him. What? No. Yes. Tom, did you know this? You're a basketball no. Yes. But it makes sense, though, because you got to remember Herb Cole, who was yeah. the previous owner. Hey, is our former I knew senator. you would so know something about 10, this. He's probably been, I told you, Tom. He's probably know. been grooming him for the position. That's so funny. I, I didn't think about, about it from that angle, but I did know that, yes, um, <laughs> Herb Cole owned the Bucks. Uh, what did he? He owned it for like 20 years. He yeah. just sold it recently, but his name. Name is um, a- Alex Lazary. Um, oh, actually, no, it's not. It's yeah, it is Alex Lazary. Herb That's Cole, his name. Is he single? Well, I could tell you Herb? some stories about Herb, Herb Cole, but I won't even put his business all out I there. Know is Herb and smoked weed before? <gasps> yeah. That's no. Herb. Oh my! Not marijuana. He's a. I heard he's a pretty stand up guy, but I used to see him on the scene in Milwaukee a lot back in the day no i was just asking because my friends are single and i'm just saying those are the kind of guys you need to go out for the people who just sold the bucks and stuff like that well he's been he's been a millionaire for probably generations he's probably got generations. you know the richest family here in milwaukee is the bradley's no uh probably the johnson's no the menards no, I yes, bet the, John- the people that Google it now. The people who own Johnson's, the people who own wax. Menards, the man who owns Menards. I can see that if it's Menards, you got to think about look how at, many homeowners. I said in Milwaukee, in Menards, like in not Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Okay, because I was going to say I, think I the, may be wrong, but last time I looked, I looked it, it was the people who own Menards, and I was like, is he single? Because I need to put my few girlfriends up on him. Those are the kind of those are the kind of people you know that I want my friends to start dating. Okay, I'm gonna look that up in a minute. Okay, but okay. I'm sorry, keep <laughs> it with you, but you're down. Now. Okay, so anyway, this guy Alex Lazary, so he is actually rich he's the son of a hedge fund billionaire Mm. his father's the co-owner of the books his name is mark lazary but he's running against ron johnson and the thing that's really interesting about this race is that this dude is like a very prominent wisconsin democrat so you're right tony he's probably been groomed to do this okay um there's only one other democrat running against ron johnson in 2022 his name is tom nelson and he's representing um out which is like right outside of green bay um, and he's another dim running against uh, another white man dim running against Brian Johnson. But okay. um, this guy, Alex Lazar, he was um, he is not new to politics. He ran. He worked in the Obama White House when Obama was elected as like a White House aide. Um, he's the one that actually got the 2020 Democratic National Convention here. Um, right. But as we know, it didn't really happen because it of the pandemic. Are we going to get it for the next one, then? I think so. I, I want think we should so. get it by default. Because they built all those hotels and stuff for it. I think they should just, you know. Mm. 
Trail I think it's a good idea. We'll yeah. see. I mean, we're ready for it. Wisconsin. Milwaukee is ready for it. We have so much going on right yeah, now. Yeah, well, and then now that we flipped to blue for this election, you know. Yeah. It might, you know what it actually might make sense yeah. next time coming around. Yes. It'd be here since it was supposed to be anyway. Yes. Right. But then the universe. So this guy is um, very, very heavily focused on all the social justice stuff. You know, he so. was involved in the Black Lives Matter protest in the summer after. Is he black? No, he's white. Oh, he's white. He's a not. billionaire. Not let he's no black person right. All right. The Bucks, right. He lives in Wisconsin. <laughs> so he lives here. He, that's well, that's the only reason why he can run. Um he he was in the protest for Jacob Blake. Like he's out there on the streets with Jacob Blake and I after I love when you be dropping these little nuggets of knowledge <laughs> because this stuff I need to know. Yeah, it's um I've just found out about it recently, but I did some more digging into like the information behind it. But mm-hmm. so he's a, he's like big time um Democrat, social justice, unionization, collective bargaining, tax uh, decreased tax cuts for corporations, big time environmentalism like the apparently the Buck Stadium um, all of the materials, like 80-something percent of the materials were sourced from Wisconsin. Like, they didn't get it from, you know, other places yep. or and they're, it's supposed this. to be it makes you feel sustainable. Proud. It is. Mm-hmm. Um, he, um, so remember when during the bubble, when the NBA was playing in the yes. bubble and the Bucks were the only team that refused to play after yes. the Jacob Blake shooting? Yes. That, that was, was all out. a part of, you know, his vision and strategy mm. for making a statement about all the mm. um, unrest and all the injustice in, in America. And he's endorsed by, like, all the black establishment Dems, like, you know, um, Cavalier Johnson and Mar- Martha Love and Joe Costa, Zembo, wow. whatever her last name is. And and so he, you know, he's got a lot of love, and I think he might have a shot to beat Ron Johnson. And you know about, do y'all know what Ron Johnson said recently? Y'all heard about this Do tell us, let's, let's. Do we need to hear it? <sighs> it's not yes, going to surprise you. I mean, it. yes. it's not. Please so he, it. he said that had the tables been turned and – um, Trump won the election and t- there were tens of thousands of Black Lives Matter and Antifa protesters. He might have been a little concerned, but he wasn't concerned about the people who did storm the Capitol. But if it was Black Lives Matter or Antifa, he would have been a little perturbed. So <laughs> he just pure. said this like le- last night, I guess, or yesterday mm. on some kind of radio show. So he's just doing what? a lot. No. Yeah, no. you got to go. Yeah. And, you know, he's a businessman. And I think that this might be a good fit um, with. Um, this guy being a businessman as well and mm-hmm. owning the Bucks, Mark. Um, I keep free Alex is his name. I, I'm getting him confused with his dad. Is so, he Russian? No, he's just like white Wisconsin dude. You know, I mean, he just and he's a billionaire. His father's a billionaire. I don't know if he he's is. A billionaire. Right. His father's a billionaire. Right. Generational, yeah. Generational wealth. wealth. Generational right. wealth. Right. 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 So womp I just think that's kind of cool that they yes. decided the Bucks wants to, you know, they're carrying on that legacy and of, at least they're you know, using politics. their money for something to help minorities or help other people that are less privileged than they are. Oh, they've been doing that for a while. You yes. know, like they hire so many black folks and women in particular to uh, for the construction of the, of the um what do you we call it Pfizer Forum? Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, all they're they they're they're kind of woke, I guess, as much Forum. as they can I be. I haven't either. I you was, know, I was Have supposed you? to go. Yeah. Like, I was supposed to go to a New York Bucks game, but I think that's when COVID just hit, mm-hmm. so I did not go. But I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Yeah, it looks great. It's beautiful. They did a great job. So um, I wanna go. Yep, that was a beautiful download. I love. Oh, that. thank. Well, yeah, you know, this I love to know about you know, this kind of stuff. We got are all with education. Yes, I, I, I love know. that. I don't that's that black master. Should I? Should I make more salacious or something? No, keep being you. Okay, keep thank, being you. you. thank you. Thank you. Edu- you're my educational <laughs> pod. When Aziza Yay. was uh, producing y'all one day, she was like, I-, I don't know. They were just, I just felt just not smart enough for this podcast. <laughs> oh, Aww. I love Aziza. No, she she's is definitely brilliant. Dope. And I'm so proud good. of them being like number seven out of yes. the plus size podcast. That was dope. Yes. Out of the what now? Plus size podcast. Oh, nice. podcast. So number seven on the planet. That's wow. The article says wow. on the planet. That's so dope. dope. Yeah. I number love that. Seven. Uh, and it was funny because when we looked at the list that morning, uh, power. when we looked at the list that morning, it was only like maybe like two or three like nationally recognized podcasters that were above her. That's dope for uh, you, though. It, it was. I was more proud for them than anything because they were the first podcast I went out and says, y'all got something that the world needs to see. Okay. Mm. So for them to end up on a list like that. It's like I was more proud. Like, I think I was happier mm-hmm. than they were 
because I don't, I don't get nothing on the back end for it. But it's like, yes, I promised somebody something, and now you got it. That was dope. You I like know. that. Yes. You know what time that is. So, um, y'all next. So, don't stop being who hey. you are. Oh, we definitely. I'm not worried about that because we just being authentically who we are. and Because with the way streaming services are going right now mm-hmm. and how they're giving more outspoken black people avenues to be who there. They are. Yeah. You guys will fit. Like, before we got here, we was watching the Amanda Ruffin show. And I watch her all the time because mm-hmm. she reminds me of you. I didn't even know oh. who she was. Like, yeah, when it, when it comes to the, the knowledge she drops, she reminds me of oh, you, Shana. Mm-hmm. of Shauna. Yeah. Uh, but a little bit more funnier, though. Well, yeah, I'm definitely not that Shauna funny. is funny yeah, as hell. Don't, have... don't let this uh, intellect <laughs> shit fool y'all. <laughs> Shauna, honey. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that Shauna's not funny. All my I'm friends. not Amber yeah. Ruffin all, funny. She's all, Those jokes she's all business when she comes in. Honey, here. Shauna is <laughs> cutty. <laughs> <laughs> That's my bougie black friend, and bougie is a good thing. Yeah, yes, you know, we, bougie not uppity. No, bougie uppity, whatever. We deserve to be that. I don't think I'm are. uppity. No, not at all. No, 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 no. no, 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 no uppity no. is something different. Yeah, I don't know if I'm bougie is, either, but whatever. Well, my download basically is just going. Um, have you heard about the shootings in Chicago? We just watched. Mm-hmm. The video we just watched it. it. Well, I just watched the video, and it was like horrific. So, um, prayers to all those families who lost people that were in that party in Chicago. But I got shot in Chicago. Chicago, so what kind of wait what it was like a house it was a house party a cracking people. party <sighs> that shouldn't have been happening during covid i mean you know have like 15 people at max make sure you've been around these people they've been tested they've known you know, I, I it's just certain stuff that i just would not be putting myself into but that still does not give a right for anybody to come in with a gun and to take anybody's lives i People are playing God too much these days mm. by either uh, being overly judgmental because judge, judgment is a thing that humans do, but it's an over, it can be overdone, you know? Um, and it's just like taking somebody's life. It's been so much going on. Um, I have a friend who just lost somebody very special to them. So my prayers and, you know, blessings and just, you know, just praying for strength for anybody who lost somebody in, in those Illinois um, shootings and even anybody who just lost somebody recently, you know, my prayers and for strength are with you and your family. So that's just my down low. Hmm. Didn't mean to bring the crowd down, but no, so, that's the, yeah. So was it like a mass shooting or something? It was a mass shooting. Like four people. The video I saw, I'll share it with you later. Like four people had got, and it was so graphic. I've seen so much graphic stuff these days that I'm just not immune to it. Maybe I, I, mean, I am immune to it. Maybe I should go into counseling as I spoke about previously because just seeing somebody, a dead body laying there, and I'm not like affected. Like, oh, it's another Sunday. That's a shame, right? Am I crazy? No, no. It's okay. just the world has actually turned to the point where we get numb to stuff like, that used to be. We should not be able to see this shit. Like, take me back to ninety five. Mm-hmm. Do y'all remember the movie Kids? Yes, yes I was just I, watching that a couple of weeks ago. Yes, oh, what YouTube? Yeah, uh, no, I actually own it. Oh, okay, because it's only on YouTube now. I'm thinking they took it down because of like a lot of like Cause, child sexual stuff. Because if you stuff. look at it mm-hmm. as today, it will be. Kids, if yeah. you have not seen Kids, get on YouTube and watch Kids. That movie changed my life. Yeah, that was it was a lot going traumatizing. On that yeah, and that was uh, Rosario Dawson's yes. debut. Rosario oh, Dawson was, was in there. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's her debut movie. Uh. Talking about fucking and stuff. <laughs> um, but, but that movie just changed my life because it gave me like a perspective of like, okay, so I'm not alone in this. Like, well, all people do this. Right, we mm-hmm. have sex and talk about drugs. Right, I, don't I know. mean, <laughs> speaking of TV, because um, like I said, like I said, with streaming services, I was watching HBO Max yesterday. Me too. And Challenge. there's a new show on there. Generation. Called Generation. Yes. You see, I love it. Uh, and it was funny. I only turned it on because the main boy is it Chuck. Chester. Chester. Uh-huh. He is the main character from the Detective Pikachu movie and the Get Down <laughs> show that used to be on there. Yeah. You can tell you got kids. <laughs> well, no, no. I I like Ryan Reynolds, so I was going to watch Detective Pikachu anyway. Detective Pikachu. <laughs> but he, he, he played the hell out this role. He did. Um, is he not gay? I don't know. Oh, That's how good he did. Job. That's how good he did where I don't know. But what I loved about, this is my download too since we're here now, yeah. <laughs> um, is how they gave the LBGT plus a universal voice. 
like you see it from different perspectives so someone who's from the heterosexual world i have more of a realistic understanding of what being not only a teen is but a teen who's trying to find their identity at the same time you have one character who's living out loud you have another character who's questioning who she is but her family's accepted it and then you got another one hiding in the closet but still wants to be their authentic self you just tom the universe is is, is <laughs> manifesting itself today because we're on the same wavelength. Wait, so is this it. the is this the show about? Wasn't this a um, has like inf- um, storylines about the AIDS epidemic in it? No, no not okay. This I'm one. thinking of that's, something. That's else. another one. That's uh, that's another. I was watching that. Too, okay, with Doogie Howser in there. Yeah, yeah. that one. That okay, one, that's not the same one. one. Okay, that one was though. But that just goes Neil Patrick things. Harris. Yeah. sorry. We always he will always be Doogie. He's always gonna be Doogie. Oh name. no, I've been watching the Harold and Kumar, and he was funny as hell in that. Was he? First of all, oh he sure I was. I just wanted to say that that just led into why I wanted you to be our guest today because and I want to say this there are so many straight men that are in my life like in my like life who are just like straight dudes who just don't don't put me or anybody who I know in a LGBTQI box like it's just like y'all people we people and like I don't see y'all as like oh they DL those are the people like I know y'all like coochie <laughs> uh, yeah working at Wells Fargo you like, definitely knew I like coochie right I know you know oh, and Lord. it's not like well, you never had a, it, it was never an issue like oh Tyler gay I can't talk to him they're gonna nah. think I'm, it was never that and those are the people those are the guys who I know are straight mm-hmm. and those like mm-hmm. my friend well I don't, I don't yeah I can call him my friend uh, Vito he a rapper like he is a great father and I know he's straight because like he don't like be uh, intimidated by me like I can say anything and he just be like yeah, that, you crazy. You, you, like I, we, I could be mad at him, and he don't take me personal because he know like it's not a personal thing. It's just right. me. I just blow up. So I just commend straight dudes like that, and that's why I like live for you because you just always been just like open. And for you to watch that show that I just caught up on today and saw that perspective that I was seeing right. just solidifies how good this world is becoming now because of people like you. So well, you know, I've always been like, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Like, me and Tyler used to be cube mates. Yes. So he used to be cracking over there. We did used to have cracking. We had fun. We had fun. We kept the pregnant women fed. Yes. We had, oh, we was, boy. It was everything. We had fun. But it's like, I've never, I've actually been more interested in learning your, v, your POV of the world. Because as much as, as African Americans have to deal with the ever changing climate of the world, the LBGTs are even worse because you have to deal with being black and you have to deal with your se- your sexuality yourself. And then you have to deal with society accepting your sexuality because it's bad enough that we are already going to be behind the eight ball being black people, period. Mm. Okay. No matter how successful we get, we're never going to be fucking. We got a whole fucking black princess. And she's having fucking issues with white people. So <laughs> let's just keep that a buck. And she half white herself. Right. So just, let, just imagine. Half Caucasian. Look at well, our president. We had issues. Our, our vice president, she about to have issues. You're always going to have issues. And then with the LBGT getting a major voice over the last 20 years, bigger than they've ever had. You know? Huh? LGBT. <laughs> He's LBG. <laughs> you know, it's okay. The, the alphabet they, gang. Are they, I'm going to say, are they not interchangeable? You can't just do the. You Look, uh, what's his <laughs> name? <laughs> Who's he talking about the last time? What the black? Dave Chappelle. Listen. <laughs> alphabet gang. We got to find Dave Chappelle. <laughs> but you know what? Dave, yeah, Chappelle, know what Dave Chappelle actually was one of the first people that actually helped me view y'all. Y'all, y'all, Look, sound, like a, <laughs> sound like a racist white person. Right. Y'all, help the community. View, help me view the community. There Thank you go. That's the word I'm looking for. Yes, help me people, view the community. Don't say a little y'all. Bit. Say the community. Help me view the community a little bit differently, and that's kind of what made me be able to, like, you know what? Y'all have the same problems that we have. Everybody has the same problem. It's just the only difference is, is while I'm over here dealing with ignorant bitches, you might be dealing with ignorant niggas and ignorant bitches. And ignorant right. bitches. <laughs> right. uh, there are times where things are like okay this is a little bit too much but then that's where people like joey richard donnie lawrence all have came back as like look tom this is why is it like this that's a whole different i love i love larry to death that is my spirit animal because he will get me right without asking any questions Mm. like we were talking about um power book two one day 
and we were talking about how this character was just gay out the clear blue. And most straight men, I've not seen that. Most gay, most straight men would be like, "Oh man, you just it's just too much gayness on TV." And then he came he was like, "No, no, no, we 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 deserve our own story too." Everything mm. doesn't have. We can sit here and watch little skinny chicken cutlet bitches get fucked mm-hmm. all day, but Definitely. why can't we have our own love scene? It's like you know what you. And right. not even that. Why is it an issue? I think if straight men are sitting there watching a gay man and you are put off by it, that's a question you need to internalize within yourself because right. the gay man don't want your woman. You should and, be less offended by. Him. You should be less intimidated by a gay man right. than you should be. And offended by him because we're not competing against you. But, you competing with this other that's person. Because as straight men, the mythos when is that all oh, they they want they, they want all they always no want every, no. And it was like half y'all definitely look, not. I like girls and half you niggas. Girls don't want you. So no. what makes you think the men exactly. want you? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And and let me just say that to say this. Men, the girls tell us all about y'all dirty draws. They tell Man. us all <laughs> about y'all dirty stanky balls. They tell us all about y'all shortcomings. What makes you think the majority of us want you? Now, there are some of the girls, <laughs> and I say that with a Z, in the community, the girls who would love to mess with these straight guys. But I say at the cat. I don't dig like that. Nah. I like my man G A Y gay. One of the things I used to love about working with Tyler was, Do like, Tyler. like he said, the women always came to him. Child. I didn't have to work hard. Mm-hmm. I could sit there and mind my business, and the girls are telling Tyler everything. Mm-hmm. And I got a notepad. Okay, and if you be this, quiet, like, <laughs> you gonna find out everything. Oh, she that they about to break up. Okay, cool. cool. Now, all the information, all the tea got spilled to Tyler for no reason whatsoever. None. And I'm like, okay. And she, I kept it. I don't, I, actually, I forgot it. <laughs> and that's usually what it was with me. And it, right it got there. to the point where if Tyler wasn't there, Tony, can I talk to you about something real quick? I was like, am I fucking Barbara Walter? You know what? Come on. Yeah. Come on. And that's literally how I started becoming a person who everybody goes to with information, yeah, too. Because I learned, like, how Tyler would handle situations, and I started handling the same way. I don't care how attractive you are. You need a voice right now, and the voice is going to help me out later down down the road. Y'all about to be wasted today. <laughs> No, <laughs> so I I'm mean, fat. I can it's still my, early. A and, the cra- right. and the great thing about it was Should like we go for cocktails after they probably mm-hmm. will. It's still early enough to go to brunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the great thing about it was because I have that perspective, and I don't judge people by mm-hmm. who they are. I want you to be authentic. So TDR is the only podcasting network in the city of Milwaukee that caters to your community. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Like I have about five to six shows on here that. Exclusively is for your community, but we're also different. Let's say oh, y'all that. so very different, and I love that because, <laughs> like the guys, like you spoke about, like Jerron and like Donnie, like the, they're younger. Like right. Donnie's ten years younger than me, but you exactly said, like, today I can see Donnie playing your little brother. Donnie is just so like outspoken, and he's himself, and like by the time Donnie is forty, he's gonna be like. Tremendous, like Jerron is already walking into his vision. Oh yes, you know? I got, it's I got plans so for him. It's just so dope, and I think you know everybody has something to give and bring to the podcast and network, and it's an outlet for people just to speak, you know, about who you are. People have followers on Facebook. People have people that really look out to them. I get inboxes all the time, like, "Oh, I just love you, your personality. Why didn't you post a status today? Your status is do this and and those things." And I'm not saying that to be a bragger, but those things mean a lot to me because mm-hmm. it means that people are actually. I may be going through something, and they not even know it, but they just need to hear something from me to make. Things feel better right. mm-hmm. so that's a blessing mm-hmm. you know it is. that energy gives and that energy gets and i can say the same thing for you shauna like i've been knowing you since college and you always been a tyler fan like Yay. you never <laughs> came and there was we we never i have never had an argument with you no it's, and i'm gonna speak that i don't into, i don't want to speak shauna that as being existence. argumentative though no because we always keep oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. we always keep it real <laughs> Like, Shauna has a way, like, if I say something wrong, she has a way of, like, making it feel like it's okay. But right. then she points out, like, well, maybe look at it like this. So I love you, friend. Like, we've never had, like, an issue. And, like, no, not, not yet. We, we, we still got some years. <laughs> we ain't going to never have if no issues. If y'all ain't had no issues in the first five, if you ain't had no issues in the first five years, you And it's been longer issues. than five years. It's been over 20, okay? I'm going to piss you off one of these days. You probably I mean, already you have. Off. You pissed me off. Y'all know how yeah. to process I have. each other. <laughs> you have pissed me off, but I have. I take it. Look, I'm 40 years old. I take into consideration you are a mother. You are. You were a wife. Like 
I'm just single. I can do whatever I want to do. I can jump I and do I whatever want. I, I want to do. Want. Y'all mm-hmm. have kids. Y'all can't do that. When mm-hmm. I, if I want to go out out of town on a weekend, I can just book my ticket. Y'all gotta find a babysitter, or yeah. you know, make sure y'all kids okay. Or I don't have the stresses y'all have. You know, you got teenagers. Ooh. You got girls, so it's a difference. You know, I, I have an adult upset. and a teenager. I, I'm not ready yes. for them to be teenagers because they already a handful. Oh, y'all eight. little girls don't eat your ass up. Yeah, yeah, and it they, doesn't it doesn't get easier. You ate, it definitely doesn't. <laughs> 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 As much coochie you done ate, oh, your dog. And you, know, and you know what? It's not my girls that I'm more so worried about. It's the boys. Yes, because they are so cute. Because my girls are smart. They too smart. So, like, if you get a chance to talk to them, like, if they give you that space, mm-hmm. you earned it. Mm-hmm. The fact of the matter is that the way boys are now, and imagine that they're going to be the offspring of this generation – a lot of them are gonna be stupid as hell. And please don't let your girls, your little girls, sit on dudes' laps. No, uncles, they don't even sit on mine. brothers. I don't like that. Mm. I don't like. I don't even like daddies kissing their little girls in the mouth. Hmm. I'm a forehead and cheek kisser with them. Well, even that, though I kissed my mama in the mouth, but it wasn't like a, a long. It was like, nah. Well, you know, like, okay, but them, isn't but that, that wasn't all the time? But isn't that what we were just talking about when we take um, our bias about genders and like you know we kind of internalize what we think about certain types of men especially heterosexual yeah. men yeah i think so yeah. maybe a little bit because i, I never had I, I i think about this a lot that i'm so fortunate that i've had we were raised in the same house with like our family for for years mm-hmm. i had four uncles that lived with us you know through adulthood and never ever ever felt uncomfortable no never Cause those were good. Those were good guys. Yeah, yeah. Like they never they kissed us regularly. Like you know, just like a baby. Ma, ah, your cheeks. You know, like grab your yeah. cheeks. Ah, you know, come yeah. on over here. And uh-huh. I, I never. It was never anything sexual. But but maybe maybe now we live in a different world because we, we do, do we have do, a lot of we hear so yeah. much we, stuff. We live in a different world, and at the same time, parents have to take accountability that. You know what your brothers and your sisters are like. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know the kind of because I don't have right, like right. my friends, like my my friend Leslie, like her daughters have all sat in my lap, but right. it was never like any. They never felt uncomfortable because mm-hmm. I didn't. Right. Do it. I just I don't know why I personally feel uncomfortable seeing, especially like if I go to like the barber shop and I see like a guy, he's there with his daughter, and his daughter is sitting in his friend's lap. I'm like, see, now, I those, don't like that. And I, and I guess it's you have to understand the dynamic of their situation. Yeah, I that, do. Maybe, he may be a friend. She's the always father, around. but he may be more Family. of a brother yeah. than anything. Yeah. So you don't they un, they have that understanding. They have that closeness in regards to it. I just mm-hmm. don't. But not every, you can't let everybody like. If my sister brings her boyfriend over by the house. He's not just family. He, he's 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 got to earn mm-hmm. the right to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like he, I don't even feel comfortable. Like if my if my girlfriend has like a little boy and they say take him to the bathroom. No, girl, mm-hmm. I stand outside the door while he be you don't pee on that toilet. But I don't want to go in there because mm-hmm. I don't want him to. I don't want him to feel or her to feel like he was going to do something because a lot of straight women feel like gay people are pedophiles. And child, I don't want no I, shitty I kid. And I don't even I don't know where nothing that, to do that, with that, that that concept. That is yeah. a very that is. Yeah. Uh, that is a connotation that is that that goes. Yeah, there's a lot. a lot of connotations it's, that are yes. put on y'all that are just yeah, yes, that right. they're done out of ignorance. Yeah, Ridiculous. I think so too. I think it's some internalized. We like stuff. grown men. Yeah. Some of them like stanking grown men. <laughs> 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 Apparently, some of y'all like the ugly ones too. They so do. I'm a s- lot of women like men who don't clean their they, they asses because a lot of straight men say it's it's disgusting or it's gay to wash their ass. And see, that's one oh, of the things. <laughs> you know what? And, and that's nigga, you gay or that's gay. That's something I had to really break from myself, and not because I I you know I'm, I kick it with the community because of this and what. Not just overall, it was just a dumb thing to say most of the time. Like, I get there's some things that if someone does, it's gay. It's gay. Okay? Because <laughs> even Joey has done it like, nigga, that's just gay. Plain and simple. But then there's other times it's we just say stuff. Yeah, there's some things. But then there's other things like I was watching uh, one of the recent episodes of Grownish. Mm-hmm. Okay? And in that episode, uh, one of the guys had a threesome, but it was a guy, guy, girl threesome. So his two male friends Shana. started questioning. <laughs> <laughs> Shana was like, "Nigga, what? what do, you like <laughs> do you like those? Is that guy, a- guy, girl, three? Yeah, you're the girl, and you have two guys. 
I, I think I answered this question before in previous episodes, and I don't you think used, I've ever been in the threesome. No, I'm just saying, I don't would that be it, like it, something it. you want to do? Idris Elba and The Rock. That's a lot of man. There's too many people in the room. I don't like threesomes either yet, but I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tom. So ahead. his guys constantly kept, you know, they were feeling uncomfortable. It's like, okay, you're gay now because you, you interacted with a man. And it was like, he was like, what's that got to do with anything? And then they started pointing out things that are pausable moments. And it's like, the pausable shit is like too fucking wild. Like eating a banana in public or drinking out of a straw. Oh, Did you see boy. that video that dude eating a banana in public and he's shaking it up in his hand like... <laughs> <laughs> That's how straight me and eat bananas. Boy, if you eat that piece of fruit. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was just like... It was a lot of stuff that was just too too much. It was like, Do you okay. know how much how much pussy a woman would give a man if she saw him eat a banana? She'd be like, oh. Do that turn you on if you saw a man eat a banana? I thought it was ice cream. You, what why what does food have to do or with yogurt. being turned on? I don't know. Sometimes if if you see like okay, okay see sometimes what that mouth do. if gay men okay, yes. or like if you go to like a sex party, they have a banana for like a demonstration on how to suck a dick. Oh, that's okay. that's the association with it. So like oh, if I you see. saw your dude eat a banana, would yeah, that or turn yeah, like, you off? Okay, or would that I see you what you on? mean. Okay, because like eggplant emoji, yeah, and all that kind of. Okay, got it. All right. Um, <laughs> I mean. Oh, that's just. Mm. It's just too close to food and fruit and sex. Just messy. Like well, it just shower. seems like forced. Like I'm going to take this banana that's phallic representation of a penis and blah blah. Put it in my mouth. Like um. No. Nah. The words you use sometimes. <laughs> I, no, you <laughs> would not. <laughs> you would enjoy. You would enjoy like somebody eating you out with like whipped cream. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But I mean, like, it just, or make, making your body an ice cream sundae. I think things need to be a little more um, implicit to me. Like, I don't need you to be like, uh, hmm, I just want to do this thing. Look. You just want it to be like a surprise. Like, you laying down and y'all enjoying yourself. Or like, maybe a little, maybe. Or something new about Shana. Maybe it needs to, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it needs to be a little more, um, uh, what do you call it? Like. Um, Impulsive? No, just. Random? <laughs> Spontaneous, uh, like imaginative, you know, creative. like yeah, so what, what would be imaginative? What would be a creative way for you? Like, oh, it's enough about me. Let's talk about you. Uh-oh. Oh, you're gonna get back in we the here house. Now. The show's Uh-oh. about you, but let's talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, how did we get here? That's so 17 glad. episodes, and you surprise me every episode. Do I, I know I'm full of surprises. That's beautiful. Yes, I am. That's my girl. <laughs> I am full of surprises. Yes. Um, yeah, I just need to be. I think. Okay, so I, I like. I really love. I'm more intuitive. I love energies and mm-hmm. intuition. And like when you try to make things too explicit, it's just not imaginative enough for me. Yeah, it needs like, to be creative. Play. Like, like I, you could just. There's a point where you where it seems to be unimaginative, which is like sitting across the room and giving me a certain look. It's like ooh. You know what I mean? So you don't have to be like doing a lot. Yes, and, like like, it's like Valentine's Day, they cut red candles and balloons yeah, and stuff like that. Oh, that's Come so on tacky. Now. So like, cliche. Yeah, it's like oh, oh my god. Come on now. Who gonna blow all these candles? Who gonna clean this shit up? And why does this represent love, sensuality, no. and like oh, no? Show me you love me on a random Tuesday. Let's go out yeah. to eat, babe. I bought you a flower. Yeah. That's Stuff beautiful. Let's do this in January. Doing a snowstorm, like something like that. Let's right. order out and eat in the middle of the living room. Mm-hmm. Watch a movie together. You go your way, I go mine. We relax. I don't want to do all that. Oh, no. Is that not me? Okay, so now you understand what I'm saying. Yes, okay, I do. Thank you. We're not touchy feely <laughs> people. Even we though I not. can be very touchy feely. See, and I am. Time. I'm a very touchy feely person. You are really? I, yeah. I, I like to get rubbed on and touched on. Like I. Mess with my wife every single day, it, and she be funny with it because I have a natural habit of just gravitating my hand to her butt, <laughs> like it just just finds yeah, its way there without even <laughs> looking. And then she be like, "Did I tell you, you could touch me?" It's like I don't. You said I do. I could touch you whenever I want to, yeah. and that's literally how we we bicker back and forth. And let it go a day where I don't mess with her. She's like, "What's wrong? What's going on? Are you cheating on me? Like the hell? Calm down." Oh. If your wife says no, no means no. My you wife never says no. You can't. You can't. <laughs> wife, you can't spousal rape a wife. My wife never says no. She See, just says no. wait till the kids are asleep. Because sometimes <laughs> if she says no, she don't mean no. She's like, what if you get zit up and your wife is like, no, 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 it feels so good. Like, and you stop. <laughs> like, like, is, bitch, you said no. That has happened to me <laughs> before. Some I'm like, you know what? I'm going home. This is. 
<laughs> you will not slap that case on me. <laughs> no, no, I was just, you know, you were just doing it. No, no, no. We got to work on your vocabulary. Words you don't say doing don't say that. Yeah, you definitely have to have a um, understanding have to, like, <laughs> these days. days. Barriers. And an NDA and a safe word. That is a shame a, you got to sign uh-huh. an NDA. These, like T.I. and Tiny, like that stuff is crazy going on between I don't them. even know much about that. It's just like girls from the past that have had threesomes with them are now saying they were forced into it because Molly or different drugs were involved. It's like, girl, you was having a good time doing that time. Don't People, say this man and his wife and, did uh, Okay, so I'm not, I'm not taking anybody's side in regards to this, but we have to be realistic. I am. Party I drugs are time. used a lot. All the time. For, it doesn't even have to be Alcohol just to get is a them drug. to the point. Just people smoke weed, people it's drink, people drug. take, you know, Molly and stuff like that. I, don't do no I get that if you're under the influence of a narcotic, you don't always have the best cognitation to say yes or no. That narcotic. But at the same time, let's be honest here. You knew what you were getting into before yes. the party started. Yes. You did. Mm. So I don't want to say because it's a woman and you you got to be, you know, no is always no. But you can't come back 10, 20 years later complaining about it when. Because you have a, a, a feeling about something you did that long ago. And now all of a sudden it's, you know, an issue because. You agreed to go home yes, with them. So I'm not. They did. didn't give you the drug there at the club and they then ask, you know, they, you talked, you partied, you drank. Yes. You're like, oh, my God, this is Tiny and T.I. Girl, yes. I'm about to. Mm, well, okay, this is why this is even coming up for him, though, because uh, maybe we ha- we have reached a point in society where people can um, bring forward the, the honest truth about how people abuse their power. And so for a long time, especially in the music industry, you know, we we put certain people – on a certain level like the video ho was down here the video vixen was right here and the groupie is all like in the same category and like you're supposed to be able to do with them what you want and they're they're voiceless really they're just there to be pretty and you know provide like super entertainment head. yeah but they, and so then they and, and so then ti t. you know he's like abusing that and taking advantage of that position that he has as a rapper and a person who can like pick from the the group of groupies and superheads and all this and then and abuse them and they don't have a how voice is abuse? but okay. how is he taking okay. advantage of a situation so because he's just getting what he wants and they're trying to get these girls when these girls go into these roles and like let's leave superhead for an example superhead went into every single situation with an agenda to take advantage of the situation mm-hmm. yeah yeah so they she do played her role she yep. created the role of a video yeah, mixer. yeah they do so she knew that if these, like you said, these rappers know that these group of women, because of your notoriety, can probably get what, whatever they want from them. So she was like, "Well, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna present myself as spot. here. This is what you can get from me if you give me this." Because there's no other opportunity. There's no other role but those roles for a lot of black women. At and, time, yeah. and so then now, okay, now you got a position where, first of all, Ti is burning himself up by saying stupid shit. And you got a movement right now where women are not trying to hear that. Like you got even Russell Simmons being called out now. You got yeah. all these other people who are like, yeah, y'all did this shit. And I'm going to tell you, we're going about to talk about it. And only a few women had gotten through to that position before. Like who's the D Barnes who got abused by Dr. Dre mm-hmm. back in the day? Her Hers kind of blew up. Her story blew up about what he did. But it was just so egregious that like. You know, it was, there, a time, it, it was a time when it was going on that the reason why D Barnes got swept under the rug. I think ever since the situation with Bill Cosby, and, yeah, and there you uh, go. That's what I'm then, saying. Uh, All what that was too. the white guy was it not Epstein? Was it Epstein? Well, Robert he was Epstein. a part of it. But you, do you director? mean the committee? Comedian? No, the director who was cool with Oprah. What was his name? The, oh, the one um, white guy. He he was like the big dude in charge yeah. of like Hollywood as a whole. That's a shame. We don't even remember his name. Yeah, that's well, because when those two Google got Google under the radar, mm-hmm. um, especially with Harvey Bill Weinstein. Harvey, Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein. Yeah. yeah, when they got under the radar, and it was so many women coming out the woodworks, mm-hmm. indicating like, yes, this is what happened. This is what happened. That's when we started really listening because it's a system with, now. It's not just yeah, it's not just isolated with, individual right. doing with it. Bill Cosby, yeah. it was like because me and Juan we we talked about it when it first happened. Mm-hmm. To be accused by sixty women, that's a lot. Let's be realistic. Mm-hmm. Thirty of those may not be true, but we still 
Other ones may be past the statute of limitation, but at the end of the day, you have 10 to 15 women who are all saying the same story. Mm -hmm. So because they're all saying the same story, no matter what the courts say, Mm -hmm. we have to start listening to Mm -hmm. these women. Mm -hmm. We have to understand. And I think that's where the voice in the past also had got ignored because just as much as like a D Barnes comes forward and say, this is what's going on. You then turn around and have a Karen, a Tiffany and a Stacy mm-hmm. who's just making up the story. Yeah. Like there was yeah. so many times yeah. women have accused a man of raping them and it was yes. not true. Mm-hmm. Yes. So mm-hmm. it was like yes. in the courts immediately would take the side of the woman. But now it's like, okay, here's, we have many men in jail right now Mm -hmm. because a woman lied. We have a dead boy in Mateel because a woman lied. Yes. Well, that was racial and sexual politics. But at the end of the day, it was a lie. at, At the core of it, it was an unnecessary lie that was told because... We're going to believe what the woman says over what the man says anyway. And that's not necessarily wrong to believe at first and at then first. do some investigation behind. But the thing about it is, is in the courts of public opinion, yes, the minute you says, make that accusation, that person is done for. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, even even with this t- the Tiny and T.I. shit, it can go through the ringer. And at the, on the back end, we come to find out that all these uh-huh. women agreed to like it. The Johnny Depp they, situation. They, was done, they, they went home with it willingly. They're just trying to get money because they were going through hard times because of COVID. Yes. So it was like, ooh, we can get money from T.I., and this is why we're here. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. In the course of public opinion, T.I. and Tiny have now been scarred and branded. Mm-hmm. And that's a shame. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. And I think, you yeah, know, yeah. it's done with, I don't want to say this, but it, it's kind of, uh, it seems like even with the Bill Cosby thing, like he was getting ready to buy a network and all of a sudden all these allegations came out. So it seems like any time a minority is getting to get to a place of power, there's always going to be a scandal. So I wonder what, T.I. and Tiny were getting ready to accomplish or what their what was getting ready to be signed what deal was it and what happened to make these people all of a sudden come forth because okay so if all these sexual acts happen let's just say 2019 we had all 2020 when people were quarantined and we hear nothing about this so what was the argument but see well, but just because girl, we didn't hear about it doesn't mean it wasn't happening like I, wasn't so happening. like people knew that bill cosby was r- drugging people for years like it was known in but hollywood the they was, was doing was, that they just wasn't think, saying nothing about it i don't it. think it was a drugging as in let me slip something in your kabucha and then take advantage of you about. I think it was, I think it was, (laughs) I think the majority of it in the beginning was just like the same situation. There were party drugs Mm -hmm. and then people went back to the room and when the drug kicked in, you don't remember what happened. Right, right. Well, but you know, people be knowing this stuff is going, that's my, I think that's what my biggest lesson is, is that. You know, like kind of like the expression, the streets talk, like people know, yeah. but then they just, it's not widely, you know, Spread. exposed or whatever, but people be like, y'all media. know someone's a pervert. He'd be raping uh-huh. people. You know, he a little rapey, you know, they, like we make little jokes about it, but it'd be real. And then it, I don't know, it just takes like, um, it just starts to be a part of who you are. And then people want to bring it out like, oh, you know, you try to be president now? Oh, hell no. You know, you rape people, right? But should your past <laughs> define what your present is? Like, what if you did all this stuff? Unfortunately, the court of public opinion. Yeah, yes, it right, does. Right, right. On Fuck paper, you can, you can win the lottery and you can take your money and you can rebuild the whole entire north side. But in between all that you randomly was getting hoes. Mm-hmm. They not going to care about the fact that you rebuilt North Avenue from the east side all the way up to Tulsa. Well, none of these they politicians go, should be in business. <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's the whole Politicians, whole community <laughs> leaders, all yeah, kinds yeah. of True, But that's the whole thing. That's why if you even pay attention to politics now, they don't never talk about the politics anymore. They just bring up everybody dirt and says, hey, this person's over here doing this. Vote for me. I don't yeah. like that. Who's, who's the mayor in uh, New York that's getting it now? Cuomo. Cuomo. Cuomo catching that hell. hell. Catch a man hell. But he's been in a position of power for years, though. You think he's been doing that for years? Whatever, I, harassing women or whatever? I probably. Because so. even with some of the things that they said he was saying he was doing, mm-hmm. that's to me, a lot of those were old words. Like, when I was in the Air Force and we were down stationed down south in uh, Texas, all the people that worked on the base that were civilian used hun and sweetie and those kind of words yeah, all the time. I use those all the time. Those are normal. Even I say that. Yeah. You know, sometimes my opening text to my friends is, hey, hun, what's up? Like, mm-hmm. that's just how I talk. But 
Yeah, he was using not, a different tone, I guess. It, 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 mm. Or just simple fact that people didn't want it from him because he was an old, ugly white guy. Well, because yep. you know, women, like oh, women will let guy. things slide if they find out the guy is cute. But if it's not someone they're interested in, anything that person says or do is, uh, get away from me. Yeah, yeah. Fine line, line. Yeah, though, there it some is. Some women like guys to flirt with them. It makes them feel something. And then when they hear something, was like, oh, am I feeling this way because this person was sexually assaulting me? Like, right. dude was just saying, girl, you look good today. What I do. Hate is when I hear guys like, What up, Miss Lady? <laughs> I'm like, Why is you calling this woman Miss Lady? Uh, That's their word. Like, I hate that shit. Like, What up, Miss Lady? Well, note to politicians. Do you like that? What, what um, up, Miss Lady? If they don't know your name, what they supposed mean, to say? I mean, you say, What up, Miss Lady? I know, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I like to play devil's advocate. So if they don't know your name, what are they supposed you to just, say? You can tell a lot about a person by the way they address you. You know what I mean? Do you like when, when, when dudes be like, What up, sister? <laughs> or what a black woman Like I said It's a certain type of person That says certain things You, you just take <laughs> it For what, what it is yeah, Some guys can be real cheesy With it Like what's going on My melanated queen From the motherland Yeah oh, right <laughs> Or much. hey queen Or sister I think people yeah. have Take the hey queen And made it yeah. it, it It's just They've gone too far <laughs> Like you, yes. you know This chick is half naked On her Instagram page And you slide in her DM Hey queen should not be Your intro and some well, of, nah, She's a queen in her own I life. don't know Some of us ain't royalty Right Thank you There you go <laughs> Look, There you go <laughs> it's a lot of people that do we want to be do we really want to be though yes mm-hmm. i do maybe a trap queen or <laughs> <laughs> We all are royalty in our own rights. I don't care if you on your Instagram showing all your nasty body. Maybe that's what you are into. Oof. Body. Uh, some people's bodies are art. Some they people are. just don't look at bodies that they find are. it like sexually gratifying. Some people look at them like, oh, that's very artistic. Oh, you got a roll there. That roll is cute. It make your body shake. They well, are because Sabrina Major is my Instagram art. That you is, are a married man. That is you one fine. Big I don't woman. know who these folks are. I'd Sabrina have to take, Major. Okay, she is, look it she up. is a model. Um, she did. Uh, I think it was for Halloween. She redid all the Beyonce videos. Oh, okay. And she she killed all of them. I have to check this oh. out. I think she's also a, a Ivy Park model now too. The, my my menu questions are related to this. So oh, let's dive in. Let's go. <laughs> let's go now. Kind of. Yeah. Let's go to the menu question. Are we? Let's we're go. going there now. Okay. <laughs> Since we're getting it first. And by the way, John Menard is the richest man in Wisconsin. I told you in I Milwaukee, know. he's a billionaire. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I need to go ahead and talk to him about investing in TDR. Oh. Oh. Hey. Ooh. Did we talk about that? Oh yeah, we're gonna get to that. We get to that. Should we do menu questions first? Well, let's let's talk about that. How do um, China go ahead and ask that question? Uh, about <laughs> <laughs> about people investing in uh, podcasts. Yeah, like, what yeah. Is the, the, so the money drawn. Well, from? right. So we you just you said uh, earlier that you know you've grown a lot since the beginning, since right. like ten years, right? So, right. um, what do you mean by that? And like, what does it take to start to make? Podcasting right. profitable. Get coins. Yeah. All right, because so it's a, it's changing a lot. You know, it's, yeah. it's changing a lot. To get those corporate sponsors. It's changing a lot, but it's always still had the basic uh, platform. First and foremost, I'm gonna tell you this, and I tell anybody who ever sits down and have an interview with me, do not go into podcasting trying to make money. There you right. go. Like right. that is not something that's going to happen right away. Normally, when I compare podcasting, I compare it to the music game. You are an artist when you have your own show. Even though you're producing episodes every week, bi-weekly, once a month, just like an artist drops an album, you don't make that much off the front end. Mm-hmm. So going through the ways of like these anchor commercials or these speaker commercials and stuff like that, uh. you get very little. I mean, you get literal pennies. Uh. Pennies for that. When I first, I keep it honest with you. I have advertisements that run in front of every single TDR uh, know. episode that drops. We know. For last <laughs> month, guess how much I made in advertisements? Let, let us know. $22.54. Mm. And how many podcasts are on the network? There's about 40. Mm. Damn, so divide that by 40 networks. We wouldn't get shit, dog. And that's why I keep telling people, <laughs> don't even try to put all your effort in trying to make money off of that. Because a okay. lot of people... When they start on their own, they use Anchor because Anchor is free. Anchor does the bulk of the work for you mm-hmm. if you're just starting out. Um, you're going to get pennies. I've literally gone to people's anchors and set things up for them, and they only have $18 they've made over four months of doing their podcast. Mm. So that's not going to make you money. The trick is just grow your followings. 
Produce a good go. product, mm-hmm. grow your followings, make yourself visible. Get your downloads. Right. So once you get yourself to a, a good number of average downloads, I say between 500 to 1,000 um, every week, create yourself a business plan. What can your podcast do? Because when you're creating a business plan, you're creating who your target audience is. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Once you know your target audience, who you specifically want to focus on, what your brand is about, now you can go out there and you can shop your own advertisements. Like You can actually have commercials because China's an educator, mm-hmm. okay? Corporations who cater towards educations or stores that sell products for schools or, hell, even some of these newer schools, these charter schools, these um, four, what, two, 220s or I don't know mm-hmm. what the fuck the school system is called anymore. Mm-hmm. But you can go directly to them and say, hey, I have a podcast. I'm an educator. We talk about these different things. We would like to present you with a package to promote your enrollment with us. Mm. So you can charge them to advertise new enrollment packages that are going on in their school. Stop right there. We don't want to give too much away. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm just saying. We don't want to give too much away, too much info away. I charge to teach you people how to do this, too. So uh, <laughs> We get it for free on the PDR, on the right. PDR network. You're joining you join the TDR family. And then to find this. out more info. But thank you for that. that no, there's that a lot of different ways you can do it. But that's a good starting point. Learn your brand, and then your brand will do the rest of the work for you. There you go. Mm-hmm. And it takes about how long you think to to learn your brand. Honestly, before you record your first episode, you should know the bulk of your brand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you've ever sat down with me and we had a conversation about how to start a podcast, I usually tell people have your first three episodes already created because at that point in time, you know exactly the direction that you want to go with your show. Yeah. So now when you're ready to go market your show to somebody, you know exactly what well, we talk about this, we talk about this, we talk about that. And this is how your company could fit into that agenda. Mm-hmm. Do you think... Um the podcasting realm was hurt or helped by the pandemic? I personally am going to say helped. Me too. Because where were we were one year ago? We were nowhere near where we are now. I was not. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is, that personally with me, I would always say help. But all that really happened was podcasting had to evolve. At the end of the day, podcasting is the new evolution of talk radio. There you go. Mm-hmm. Just like how music elevated from being on the radio to being in CDs to now streaming. being streaming services, uh-huh. talk radio elevated as well, too. It just got labeled podcast because somebody who had a podcast started calling them podcast because go. of Apple Podcasts or whatever it was. Speaking of talk radio, sorry to interrupt you. What do you think about the new Milwaukee? 101. Ah! I was to the other day. Um, I, I was. For what some is, reason, I didn't feel like plugging my phone. What is it called? 101 point. I don't know. The Black know. Talk Radio. Yeah, I'm trying to find. I don't even see um, it. It's, it's okay. The truth, one on one point seven. It's called yeah, the truth. That's what it's called. I, I Isn't like it. Radio station. Yeah, you never heard of this? You know what? FM has really been picking up a lot of stations. I heard of one hundred five point seven. Yeah. Oh yeah, I that's got a story. Jam. I got a story. I almost worked there. Uh, that's a whole other conversation too. Uh, got time. <laughs> no, basically, I was going to be a part of their marketing division, uh, but when it came time for me to sign papers, they decided to uh, check out what. TDR had to offer, and it was like, you are a conflict of interest. Mm, yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. So basically, they told me in so many nice words that what you're doing can actually rival us. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I took Look that as God. a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Because I really needed that coin. That, yeah. was, that was six figures that I was going to get from them. But at the same time, it proved to me that you what I've been working on is doing what it needs to do. And during the interview process, they taught me the proper way to market you guys there to you get go. those corporations. And get that coinage. So I figured. So I cannot I got wait what for that do. meeting. And, and we get that check on. <laughs> <laughs> so hey. uh, that that will be that, that probably may even start happening before this year is over. With Look at God. Up. It's going to happen. OK. Uh, with the way things are moving. But no, uh, I, I like them. I, I feel like um, we do need a dedicated talk radio show because everything is not always made for podcast consumption. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 
True podcasting is uncensored, it's unfiltered, but because the market is so saturated, there's not. It's hard for those people to get what specifically is for Milwaukee and what they're looking for. Um, mm-hmm. Even with us, we have a lot of podcasts here at TDR that some of them are Milwaukee based, mm-hmm. and they're they're doing great. But because they're a podcast, the reach can go way past Milwaukee, and at the end of the day, it can lose its value. So having a radio station like The Talk is going to be specifically the voices for the people in Milwaukee to have a place where they can talk about Milwaukee stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one I tuned into, uh, it was actually pretty pretty powerful because they were talking about how um, – the north side of Milwaukee is covered with trash after the snow. Oh, I was, I was just going to – I've had that in my motivation moment, yeah, but I was like, yeah. let me stay positive because I got it's a bunch covered, of – It's covered with trash, trash. but oh. more people were complaining about how messy it was. And he went on a tangent about like, bruh, just – if you clean up your neighborhood, right. we don't that. have to do all of this, you know, complaining. Mm-hmm. And we don't have to worry about what the south side is doing or what That's the right. east side is doing because we'll be fixing it ourselves. That makes people want to be over here mm-hmm. because if our neighborhood looks like trash, people are going to treat us like trash. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, streets don't right. start not being paved right. Right. Yeah. And it was like, y'all don't care about where y'all live at, so we not going to care. Street sweepers are not coming through like they supposed mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. Uh, the police is going to treat your neighborhood like ass because you make it look like ass, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it, it has its points and it has its voice. I like it. So what um, you were getting into one of my the my regular question, which was... <laughs> We were getting into it. I'm just going to segue into that. But so you got um, you have over 40 podcasts on on the TDR network. Right. But do you listen to podcasts outside of the network? And which ones are your favorite? I used to. What? And the only reason why I have to say I used to, because as we grow, I tend to want to focus to help everybody grow. So I don't have time to sit here and listen to my favorite podcast Aww. like I used to. Uh, but a lot of them, there were some Milwaukee ones. Uh, Brunch with Besties with Chanel and Cherie was one of my favorite ones I used to listen to all the time. They gave me some great book recommendations. Um, the uh, Enjoy Your Leisure, okay. which was a great business marketing and investment type podcast. Amanda Seals. Yeah. Love her. Yeah, she's got I good. She is actually, mo- what made me get into her, because I like Amanda Seals, period. She's just, just flat out funny to me. But her technical style of how her podcast goes for a monologue podcast mm-hmm. is phenomenal, even down to the sound effect. That's actually what made me start wanting to incorporate sound effects into your guys' show, mm-hmm. because I'm like... She has these little moments that just makes listening to just one person talk all day mm-hmm. bearable. Yeah, yeah. She's you know. funny. And she's funny. And she's got a good voice and a good person. Right. Yeah. Um, outside of that, there, there's still a few other ones out there. Um, <sighs> Trapping Anonymous. Mm-hmm. Now, this was probably one of the original podcasts I ever listened to that made me transition from internet radio to podcasting. Because he would do interview with people who you normally would not care about, but he would keep their identities a secret. Hmm. He's he's interviewing drug dealers, chicks who are selling their bodies on um, back page at the time. Trapping anonymous. I need to look at it. Uh, right. He had a lot of he had a lot of uh, unique conversations, and they were authentically real. You know, I like those not shows. scripted, not nothing. Not it was only not like out of all his else. episodes, it was only one episode I couldn't listen to, and it was a drug dealer from New York, and it was only because he kept, you know, kept, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. He mm-hmm. kept saying that like periods and commas, and it was like, bro, we can't keep up with your <laughs> conversation. I find that people with accents when you're speaking to them, it seems like they're trying to put on the accent even more. Oh lord, like when, when they're on the mic or like <laughs> New Orleans, like we get that you're from New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Stop putting it on so much. Mm-hmm. But what made me really, really respect him was he was the first podcast to get signed by Title. He had an exclusive deal with Title where his podcast couldn't be anywhere else. So when I seen like something that is as basic as this, and it was an idea I actually had too. So when I found somebody else who was already doing it, I was like, okay, this gives me a platform of how I want to do mine. And he got picked up by Title because his followings was just like that. It was like this this can go anywhere. Hmm. Like so there's no title. Um I want to say yes, but I think I seen him listed on like Apple the other day. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. So he may have, that deal may be done with. Um, so he's back to 
you know, being able to do what he wants. Hmm. But yeah, he was one of the first podcasts I seen that really got money. And this was a non he's a non celebrity at that. So this was before the celebrities didn't have no work because of COVID, so they all started doing podcasts and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there. Well, a lot of them are transitioning over to podcasting now. I too. think everybody just wants their voice to be heard. Well, it's been it's lucrative like too. You know, look at Charlemagne; he got his whole network for podcasting. Yeah, right? they're trying I, to make it more mainstream. You know, yeah, iHeartRadio mm-hmm. bought his network. They did. Out. They did. So now he he got his show. I think he Angela Yee's may have poured it over there now. He's got the eighty five South. Show. Yeah, he got eighty five yeah. South and Poor Minds. Poor Minds just got signed to them. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Um, mm-hmm. Which is I can't dope. wait till we get a blessing like that. <laughs> oh, it's coming. <laughs> you got to move to New York. <laughs> no, no, no. See, that's that's the mistake a lot of people make. You go where you think the bag is, and then when you get there, you find that it's oversaturated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just right here be. is perfect for us because there is no podcast scene in the Midwest like Milwaukee's is right now. Mm-hmm. And it's dope. And being the fact that I'm one of the big three networks in the city making it possible. Uh, there are it, other networks? There are, there <laughs> no, are about five. What? There are about five <laughs> other networks here. Oh, wow. Uh, are they? <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. But, but I, I tell you, all, all most of them will tell you they're not grinding like I'm grinding, mm-hmm. and that's not me being cocky either. Mm-hmm. That's literally they was like, "Tom, we cannot keep up with you, dog." That's being confident. Mm-hmm. That's you got a good location too, and a great yes, studio. That's man. I do. Yeah. This was the this was the blessing getting Sherman Phoenix. Yeah, I'm actually uh, trying to work with Sherman Phoenix business right now to get us a secondary space here. Okay, and uh, if that happens, this. It's gonna be a whole different ball game with us. I love that YouTube show coming. <laughs> oh, hey. keep that, keep that to yourself. I, hey. I, I, will, I won't say too much because the way I'm doing it, you might actually get that. Bro. I know. Hey. I won't say too much because you know people like to copycat. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know what? And it's this, okay. It's and this, okay. And this is another thing can't I learned. Nobody do it like you. Exactly. Can't That's the one thing like I learned. T-Y. I learned uh, doing podcasts is everybody can talk about the same thing, but nobody would talk about it the way you talk about you it. You know what? Mm. I used to be a person like, oh, why? Are you trying to do something I do, or why did you take that? Now it's like, boo, take it because God gave it to me. He gonna give me something else better. Mm-hmm. So yes, if right. that's what you need to do, to, if right. that's what you need to do to make yourself feel better, take it. God gonna give me something right. else. I wake up every, I can sit down literally and just think of something randomly and put it out, and I promise you. It'll be a copy. Mm. Right. Because uh, it, it just happens. It any happens podcast is going to be like that. Yeah. Let's take the R. Kelly story. When it first broke, there was not a podcast, black, white, Hispanic, no. you know, community, whatever. They were talking about it. But what makes your show different than the other person is how you approach it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your conversation mm-hmm. you know? going to be about? And then I realized, like, I can go ahead and I can sit here on this mic and I can tell you everything I got planned for 2021. And somebody can go out there and do it. I was like, oh, that was cute, but that's not how I was going to do it. No, though. that's mm-hmm. not what I was, that's not what God yeah. saw for me. Right. Let's get into your question, Shauna. I want to hear what these I, are. Well, I said my regular. That was her regular. Oh, that was your regular? Yeah. Oh, so it's not my time. Yeah. Well, my regular question. <laughs> See, Tyler, I don't know, mm-hmm. bro. Oh, yeah. I was ready for He can it. go anywhere. Right. Oh, you gonna be like, yeah. did you sleep with such and such? No, yeah, right, right. You already know. Right, uh, right. <laughs> know. It's, this is regular though, so you're gonna yeah, have an easy regular. time. Well, I'm an open book, so I don't care. I know, I know. We don't want to make anybody else mad, though. Ain't know? nobody gonna get mad at me. This this woman knows 97 percent of the dumb shit I've done, so <laughs> don't worry about. Um, have you ever been caught looking at a woman's ass? Of course, I point it out sometimes. Oh, oh. Do you feel like that's a violation? It is, but it isn't. Because I have an open relationship in regards to communication, nine times out of ten, she can tell when I've done something before I've done it. How does that feel if you catch a dude looking at your ass, Shana? So, I got a question. My my media, media question. I'm you can sorry, segue. I can't even talk. Yes, please segue <laughs> my media, media question, question is so funny. This is so funny because it's relate, related to what you just asked. Okay. okay. Which is, is the fat ass trend ever going away <laughs> as a person that lacks this booty? Okay. As a person I want to know the what the obsession is with ass and um is there another quality that can compensate for bootylessness? <laughs> there you go. That, that's the obvious answer. I'm not laughing at the question. I'm laughing at how deep it, it was how it was written asked. like only Shana could write it. Like the easy answer was like, oh why do men love ass? Like that's all you had to say. <laughs> but she it's like a four-part question. It was so eloquently written <laughs> for us to only say 
titties and personality. Oh, okay. It. No, because I'm I'm just a positive body person. Like, okay, good. You like a fat ass is it's nice a fat ass. Sometimes some asses be too fat. Like let's keep it real. <laughs> can, oh, you they can be too fat? Yes, yeah, yeah, like yeah, girl, yeah. how you wash all that? Right. There's some ass that you just gotta walk away from. <laughs> you shaking all that girl. That's gonna stink by the time yeah. you get fit down. And then titties titties are only as good as the woman who has them because they sag, sometimes they flat, sometimes they non existent. You some know. guys like saggy titties on women though. Mm-hmm. That's because mm-hmm. they on top is like right there in their face so they can get to them with ease. You know? They can multitask <laughs> well. But <laughs> no, but really it's to me, and I, it could be because I'm older now, uh, personality matters so much for me. Like yeah. you can look good, but if I can't have a decent conversation with you, yeah, I'm gonna be bored with you even I'm gonna be bored with you before we even have sex. That mm. makes me not want to have sex with you now. Mm. Because I'm that kind of person. I have to have a connection to you now mm. to even be sexually attracted to mm. you. Okay. So you can just have this nice round butt, but you just be a dummy and it's like You just you got dumb ass. Okay. Those are the girls who, who are bar for bar fucks. Yeah. People just like uh, wanna fuck. Yeah. Okay. Once the liquor's in your system, then you'll take them home and have your, your way with them and then be like Okay, call me tomorrow, but you already blocked them as they walked out the door. Mm. I'm sorry to say Reformed that. Reformed hoes are annoying to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't do that anymore. Like, girl, I know you used to do a whole bunch of stuff, mm-hmm. and now you don't do it anymore, and you're so better than that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just joking. <laughs> no, he's, I mean, he might be joking, but he's also telling the truth. I'm sorry. I, uh, it's annoying. But it's so annoying. Fun. Like, sometimes we understand that you're not the person you was before, but you don't have to force it on us. Like, yeah. We did it. We all grow up. Hell, I might even apologize for some rude shit I did when I was younger. I've done that, too. Like, you know what? I'm sorry. I was such an asshole when we was younger. Hmm. Why'd you date me? Hmm. Making amends. Hmm. I didn't know we could still do, do that. Yes. <laughs> well, this is, I have daughters. I have to amends for everything. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> I was, yeah, I guess the you're right. The cancel culture, you, you can't even say sorry no more, child. No, you sure can't. Mm. It don't mean nothing. Yeah. Well, my uh, spicy question is, uh, would you uh, let your wife have another guy in a room with you guys? Uh, a cuckold? A what? Is that cuckold? what it's called? Is that what it's called? You be teaching me all these words. Yeah, and I'm I knew that. I knew that. Oh, yeah. it's when a guy, like. You let your, but you let, let your wife, wife be with another yeah. man. And you watch. While and you, you watch. watch. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is would that what you're you asking? That? Yes. Maybe when we were younger, because we were more adventurous. Now we just old and we barely even want to do each other. So, because <laughs> <laughs> we tired. But back in the days, we were very adventurous. Like if you ever listen to uh, a couple of shows I'm on, like Hopefully Awkward, I have told a story about key parties I've been a part of and uh, things I've done. Um, me and my wife actually were fuck buddies oh. for about mm-hmm. a year before we even became serious. So. Those would be the good relationships because there's no expectations. Yeah. Mm. Like the very first time we went on a date, we had sex before the date. Um, oh, oh, people do that? I'm different. No. Oh. The sex would be the date. Gosh, you just <laughs> opened me all up. I yeah. didn't know that's possible. Okay. That's what he but said. Back in the days, yeah. Back in the days, we were a lot more adventurous, so things may have happened, and I would have been like, okay. Just know that when I'm cashing mines in, I'm cashing mines in. But now, no, nah, we probably wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Not now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Shauna, what's your spicy question? So, I got hot. I got hot and then extra spicy. Okay, so wait, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Um, so, <laughs> I, I had this idea, tell him for you to give, download and delete, Tyler and I, a criticism sandwich. You know what that is? Where you give something nice, something to work on, yeah. and something nice again. Yeah. You know, that's Ooh. how I know you a teacher. You better be careful. That's <laughs> that guiding counselor stuff right there. Be careful. I got a blade on me. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it the other way. You can do a, give no, us a no, criticism no, 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 no. and nice. It's cool. Okay. It's, and the crazy part about it is, is we've been overdue for our meeting anyway. Yeah. So Let's we go. kill two birds with one stone. Okay. Mm-hmm. So as Fun for you two, um, honestly, criti- uh, positive things I love about y'all is y'all do bring a perspective that's a little bit more mature. That's definitely missing from the network. Um, I learn. Is that old? Yes. Um, <laughs> I learn something new every time I listen we to y'all. Old. And... That's that's pretty cool. Like a lot of okay. people come back and they listen to your show. They don't listen to the day you record. Mm-hmm. They always listen to you guys later. After. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they have a little kombucha, maybe some hot tea <laughs> on the side <laughs> with you some know, bourbon in it. With some bourbon <laughs> in it. You know, uh, they do find Shana very interesting. I think one of the things is um, Shana does need to open up more. 
Um, we do oh, learn something yeah, new. Oh, yeah, no. Um, I'm trying. I'm working on it. Tyler 17. <laughs> I was just saying. To be old. That's one of the things that I, I, I've noticed, like, you can, Shana, you can say me. Shauna has a personality that I think a lot of people want to know. They want to know you, Shauna. They do. Mm. They do. Because uh, it seems like every single time I make my perception of you, I'm terribly wrong. <laughs> terribly wrong. <laughs> so it's like, okay, so who is the real you? But I like that that mystery about Shauna. I do. Shana, I do. Yeah. Um, right. And then the, the final piece of bread on the sandwich is you guys are are probably going to be one of my most successful shows um, once the world opens back up and we can start bringing things together and not just only in the in in the lbgt community but just overall um once i can start putting you guys on panels and i would love to do a live show yeah yeah and do y'all y'all actual live show um I, I can see a lot from y'all. Yeah. I get a lot of compliments about our vibe, but I'm like, I don't even notice it. But I guess because we're friends, yeah, friends for that, a long I time. know. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't even. I didn't even think about the vibe. Y'all just naturally have a chemistry it's that not yeah. fake. It's just real. Yeah. Well, sometimes yeah. we're like hanging out the night before yeah. we come here, or talking, you know? or texting about something. I'm like, Sean, we can't talk about that. Let's wait for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or, high, or high as hell when the episode yeah. starts. Yeah, that liquor, honey. <laughs> 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 that liquor, honey. But that'd be the funniest thing. When yes. Once once the liquor get in with yes. y'all. Y'all literally trying to be like. <laughs> I hope people don't think we're luscious. It's Wisconsin culture, and we no, j- we're they, not drunk. We just drink. We drink. No, a lot yes. of shows. I've noticed lately since the pandemic, a lot of shows have been incorporating drinking into it. Not just TDR, but just across the board. Like I find a lot of shows that are drinking, and the cool part is um, that's another avenue of revenue that could be for y'all. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah. Where y'all can start getting sponsorships for what y'all are drinking that day. I would day. love to like. Like locks, any you know people that have lock products, I would love to sponsor your I would products. Lo- I would, on here. Yes, yes. Natural hair care. We both have natural yeah. hair stuff. So yes, indeed. That's an avenue for us. So I would love that, and I would love for um, Hot Fields Brewery to sponsor our own and Public Allies <laughs> too. Yeah, we're Ooh, Public yeah. Ally on the show, and yeah. that's another thing. You guys are safe enough that I can put any kind of guest on y'all show. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. we've yeah. had a lot. We had a little girl on here we a couple that's weeks what I'm ago. Saying. It's, sa- it's sa- y'all show is safe enough for that. We are. I can the, mark- the most diverse show on. The you network. are, and I and I can promote you guys anywhere. Yeah, and and you'll be able to work. Thank you. I can't do that for every show. That's just like true. as much as I love Donnie and their show, don't, don't I can't, point out nobody. I can't show. put I can't put Donnie everywhere. He knows it. I can't Give put them all them everywhere. Hell, I can't put my show everywhere. Yeah, I, I honestly feel like Happy my birthday, show Donnie. is the reason why I didn't get the marketing job. <laughs> that couldn't be it. You but we have do, to listen we, to my show. We bring you. food. I do sometimes. I listen to a lot of the shows on the network. I, I do don't too. Know if they listen to yeah, us, I do but too. We listen to. So what's your? So here's my question: What's your favorite show? That's not your show. My favorite. Show us honestly if if it's not Jerron's show, um, the get you a piece. It has to be the pretty plus size show. I love yeah. Them. Those are I was gonna say those are mine um, too because she's just like a humble person. She's real and it's like, girl, you've been living here how long and I didn't even know you. That's the type of person like I should know all the dope people. <laughs> yeah, and there's a show on here too where they're drinking bar. Is it the bar talk show? Real bar talk. Yeah, I like uh, that one. Uh, and totally. then I know Harvey, so I tried to listen to him too. And, um, course, and he's he's funny Zina's too. Show. Yeah. Well, when she when when she gets back, you know, in the groove of things, right? When she's ready, she girl. already knows that uh, there's an avenue waiting for her. Yes, and I love Donnie and them new show. I love you know, it's, it's different. It's wild. It's definitely <laughs> different. It's different. Okay, I gotta listen to some more. It's of these. wild. It's different. I think everybody has an avenue. Everybody has a voice. There is something for everybody, especially in the minority culture. No matter if you're black, white, Puerto Rican, Asian, I think you are a minority in some sort, certain yeah, form of fashion. PLC. So I. Think think you know it's room and opportunity for everybody and that's one thing i did on purpose every show on the yes. network is not like another show already on the network and that's mm. good because we don't want to be like nobody else so my well, spicy question well my inter- so my Go last ahead. question kind of goes with what we're just saying so okay. should i, yeah, should no. I interject yes, okay please, so my <laughs> this is this is spicy just because you know <laughs> it's you yeah right that too but you'll see why so 
I was thinking I about really um, too spicy with Tom. He ain't shy. Right, he sure is, not is he? So it's <laughs> kind of these are just all regular questions for him, right? I fucked that bitch yesterday. No problem. So we were just talking about all the gorgeous women and men on the po- on this podcast and network that you have, right? Okay, you feel it trying to make me pick one? Yup. Ooh. Okay, but listen, wait. So. <laughs> Okay, so if you want to um, substitute like celebrities for some of these questions, that's fine. No, 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 no. But I want you to pick one. Which one would you do for the following activities? All right. Well, maybe on your podcasting network, if you can't think of one, it could be someone else. But um, who would you drive to California with and camp along the way? From the network. Yeah. If you can't think of one, it could be, you know, like a celebrity. That's fine. (sighs) Is sex on the table? Because that makes a difference I, between I, two oh, people. Hey, I, no, no, it makes a difference between two people. There because, are, because it could uh, me, be. Because me and Aziza, I could literally go anywhere with her. Okay. Okay. But I also look at her like my sister I never okay. had. It doesn't have to be on the table. I just say I know. Like, no, no, no. That's just me. Okay. I like Aziza, too. Because she, she's just dope. That's just my people's no matter what. Um, I'm I not, go everywhere with Juan anyway, so he don't fucking count. That's my brother. See, at the, the get together, I want to make sure I meet all these people. And that's that the whole have. purpose. The first get together was yeah. it was planned, but it was also rushed. This one, the paint and sip one, we're going to do. It's going to be more planned out. It's going to be more Since bigger. I'm doing the it's going to be breaker. space like a coordinated event. Yeah, it's going to be more. It's going to be more to keep people interactive. And I'm asking figure. adult questions, so you fuckers get ready because I want to know. There's no prudes on the network. Know, That's actually a, a contract requirement. You can't be a prude on the network. I just want yeah. people walking past me and not speaking. Right. <laughs> I'm six uh, four, very friendly too, and yeah. I am a hot uh, bitch. Yeah, so cross country <laughs> drive. Would camp be, along the way. They're camping on the line. Mm-hmm. It probably would be Aziza because she's probably the most resourceful person who I can get stuck with mm-hmm. and, like, would know what the fuck to do. Okay, who would you ride through the south side of Chicago with? Oh, that definitely is Kiana from Talk is Cheap. Okay. Because she, she bought that life. Oh, who would you ride through the north side of Milwaukee with? Uh, <laughs> shit, everybody. Everybody from the north We're side. all from here. Like, <laughs> all from the Tyler and I live right out. Shit, we're sure. all from here. Okay, who would you share a puppy with? Share a puppy with? You ever heard about the people sharing puppies? Like, I've they come that. to your house and then they go to the other person's house some days. I've done I think that. that's a it's great fur, idea. It's your fur baby. I've done that. Yeah, I, I want to do that. I had a fur baby. We should share a puppy, before. Tyler. You want to share a puppy uh, with? <laughs> Someone who I share a puppy with. Damn, who do I can it's trust to portal. take care of a kid, first of all? I got to trust them. <laughs> you had to look at the <laughs> wall. looks at the wall of fire. I, see, y'all don't understand. I have to look at it. It's so many people. Well, it's obviously not Tyler because he don't want no puppy. Uh, I don't want no damn, uh, I mean, <laughs> you I know what, Alicia, pool, from Speak Your Truth. Okay. Okay. All right. And um, who would you let watch your kids? <sighs> Actually, all of them. Can. <laughs> Anybody? But, yeah, I would watch the girls. All of them can. Because my girls love everybody. They'll be divas by the time I left. I'm they are posing on they Instagram. Are. They already divas. <laughs> That's funny. Purses. <laughs> Had and long ponytails. <laughs> they already. They already divas. So you ain't doing that. And but no, honestly, I can. My girls. It's funny because my girls are executive producers for Root to Fruit and uh, P3 Podcast. Aww, I love that. For them. And this is the last one. Um, who would you wife swap with? Oh. Mm. Well, shit. It's only, or girlfriend, I guess. Well, there's only one other married dude on the network. <laughs> oh, else. okay. You no, it's s- actually two, and, but it would end up. It would ha- Just because of the nature of the question, it would end up being my boy Tori. But me and Mel would fight every single day anyway because we both military and we already fight. Mm. So I'll give her back in like a heartbeat. <laughs> okay. See, I, was, I didn't make that too spicy, but it was. No, that, no, that was spicy. that. That made me think. Yeah. Now, now people are gonna be like, "Oh, so you gonna take her on the road?" <laughs> oh, wait, hold on now. <laughs> and camp. Yes. I'm not camping without sex. I'm sorry. Really? <laughs> it's the best sex. Oh, camp See, I told you I learned something new about you. I, I would not expect you Ooh, I'm to sorry. be getting busy on in a cold tent? Gra- in a cold tent? ground. It's not Colorado. always cold. It's not always cold when you can't. I couldn't see that. No. I just wanted to say, like, when we drink on the show, I think we started the show off because it was like we have some like really good conversations, and so we wanted to like bring it to the masses. Like our friends always be like, "Y'all are crazy." So mm-hmm. like we always <laughs> get together and have like charcuterie and wine or something. And, and our yeah. friends listen to us talk. Yes. Now they like, like y'all, well, y'all are crazy. Are crazy. <laughs> and it's just like these are the conversations we have. Charcuterie. Behind. I love charcuterie. charcuterie. Yes. No, so I long. just learned that word. 
word recently. We should have some charcuterie at the events. Maybe I mean, we can hook up with 38 Charcuterie and get a sponsorship. See, that's how you do it. And then we shout them out on the show. Hey. Hey. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Okay, this is my last spicy question. <laughs> how much head has been given in this studio? Oop. <laughs> Look around. Ah! Like, where? That is the one question I cannot answer. <laughs> oh. So some of these networks, have, I'm gonna ask that question at the get together. How much head has been given at the studio? In the Ooh. actual studio, I don't think nobody has done anything yet in this studio. Okay. Um, well, one, one because we actually respect this space. I'm not saying we didn't respect the old one, but it was more space and opportunity at the old place. Like you, could, the bathroom was about as big as this room, so shit can happen. Oh, yep. And I just can't confirm or deny if anything did or didn't happen. Well, that means something happened if you can't confirm or deny. Uh, it. But for here, I don't. I don't think so because y'all ain't getting no head in Sherman Phoenix. Uh, probably somewhere. <laughs> somewhere well, it might not be in the studio. They may have. It may have gone down in the here. hallway. Maybe in the bathroom. The bathroom. The back bathroom and the lower level. <laughs> Stump your feet two times if you want somebody. To, I, don't mind <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not against it happening here. Just make sure you clean up after yourself. Uh. Balls be stinking. Mm. Who just stink too? So mm-hmm. I mean, definitely do. Sex is a nasty Bring some poopery spray smell. before right. you start. Right. <laughs> Six, cl- eight, twelve. I mean, clean up. <laughs> I mean, clean up after yourself is all I got to say. Did you buy the six, eight, twelve infant? Uh, the go- what is the Ganesha? I buy, buy, I don't know about the Indian ones, you know, like oh, yeah. the the what is it, the patchouli? Yeah, you know? the ones we get. Yeah, sh- nag champa. The nag champa. Yeah, the blue I box. The, I buy the box, the whole assorted pack. Oh, oh. Tom, you survived our question. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought someone was like, yeah. <laughs> no. I knew you would. <laughs> no, because I'm now sitting here You're thinking, like, shy. damn, has anybody tried to do anything in the studio? Oh, got you thinking. He probably doesn't know. I ain't bust nobody out, but Jerron had told me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Hey, Joey's a wild boy. It so. could have been. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no honestly, I'm thinking about the, the road trip question. Like, who would I? Yeah, who, yeah. Who would I? You know what? I, I know who I would, but I, I can't say it out loud. Because I have we'll a, I have a no, uh, a no, no flirting policy. With oh, myself. okay. Where, oh, nobody on the network. <laughs> where once no uh, fraternization, yeah, no fraternization <laughs> for me on the network. So what y'all do is y'all business, but for me, I can't. Not not if you work for me. Oh, like okay. That. I like that. All righty. Okay then. See, we're gonna make you open up one of these days. Then, since you're trying to make me open, up. right? Make me, make me. Okay, you gotta do listen to my show. I open up every goddamn. Time. You're gonna have to break some of your rules, though. Then, I guess. Oh, wait, what? That's the next what level. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. We'll think about it. We'll Ooh. think about it. Rules with those be. Ooh, y'all are funny. Okay. All right. So now it is time for the segment of the show where we actually delete mm-hmm. something. Okay. Shana, what are you? Oh, yeah. What you got. You got to go first. This time. What am I deleting? Mm-hmm. I am deleting um, uh, daylight savings time. Right. <laughs> what the I'm deleting hell? that shit. So does that mean we get more sunlight now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we get more sunlight. All right. But I'll take sleep, it. I'll take so, it. But I'm. I'm a it's gonna take you a while anyway. to get adjusted. But yeah. I'm an insomniac anyway. So, yeah, I'm doing. I feel the, like some insomniac cookies right now. Oh, insomniac mm-hmm. cookies, they be so good. Mm-hmm. They be like $30 for two. I know. Fuck that. I'll go to Century. Not se- Hold on, not Century. Pick and save. I was going to say, you trust they cookies? No. First mm-hmm. of all, I got a rotisserie chicken from Century, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it was disgusting. There's only like three mm-hmm. of them left. No, you you got to go to Pick and Save. Sendix has good rotisserie, too. You're in Sendix. I need mm-hmm. to check out Sendix, but I ain't going to pay no $10 for no rotisserie. You get, your, you get your grocery delivered to your house, don't Sometimes. you? Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Not She's all the so time. Boozy. So boozy. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with black. All I, black women should be. I like grocery shopping. shopping though, so I prefer to go to it the just, grocery store. That's Are you more Walmart or Target? Kohl's. Mm-hmm. Kohl's for oh. groceries. Oh, groceries. Uh, neither. Tar- I, if I had to choose, it'd be Target. I mean, yeah. like like household I'm stuff. Gro- you go to Target. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to the Walmart. My prices be thin. I'm sorry. Well, my daughter. It's works not that I don't like going to Walmart. Walmart. It's like sometimes Walmart just they, stuff be gone. Oh yeah, that's they, what it be. Their staff is. I go to the good ones, so. though. 
Okay. You go out to Germany. I ain't gonna tell everybody. Right. I was gonna say you must go out to. I go to the Grafton or something. The one in Brookfield. There's a Walmart in Brookfield. Yeah, right up Greenfield. Mm. Right, we each other like yeah. <laughs> Like I don't what know about the that water one? sound. Them up the water in the pipes. Oh, I'm like, what is that coming from? Is there a waterfall? Here? We're in here early today, y'all. Yeah, we I don't know, know how is the working the of this time. building. Yeah, <laughs> about our new time. Yeah. Yeah. You're used to everything mm-hmm. moving, <laughs> moving and grooving. Okay, let me see. What am I? I'm really deleting. I'm what I'm taking away is our future success. Yes. Yes. I, kind of I think we can do that. it. You I think we can do it. And now that it's on, um, it's recorded. <laughs> you got to keep your that's word. That's right. I, 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 always, try to, I mm. always keep my word. If We're I say it, I stand behind it. No that's matter dope. what I do. We're going to play, play this episode for you when we're, uh, you know. Signing that new contract. Right. <laughs> for that endorsement. Hey, whatever y'all do, the endorsement money goes to y'all. I don't get none of it. There it mm. goes. Amen. So that's, that's how you'll be blessed. That's, That's right. y'all money. Y'all pay me every month. That's how I get paid. Y'all do the Don't rest. Don't be telling everybody our business. <laughs> everybody <laughs> on the network pays every month, okay? <laughs> That's not We that. paid in advance just so y'all That's know. not a secret. <laughs> Everybody pay. And, and Tone, we'll let you know when you ain't Ooh, getting running this check. Okay. Look, he copy and paste that up to <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> personal tweets, it's Gmail, on. AOL. <laughs> <laughs> that message is on an auto post. He's going to make sure you know. I have a software that auto posts that every Wednesday, every last Wednesday of the month at noon. Okay? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Yes, y'all. That, that auto post be sending you the QR code. The, yes. the the cash tag. Bring you a warning what? statement. You <laughs> have thirty nine <laughs> seconds to okay. make payment. Because we all know if a person don't tell you you owe them, you shall forget. We're not gonna rush yeah, to pay you. Yeah, you he right. made sure he did it because that but stimulus right. hit too. You right, y'all you stimulus right. is gonna hit. Because I, I know me, money. I got bills that I owe, and until they give me that notice, I don't. Be, I uh, right. I just put it in this account until they say so. We hear you. Got to keep the lights on up in here. All right. Amen. What you deleting, Tom? What am I deleting? Other than my student loans, that's what I want. To do. I Let make, them delete that because right. all I got left is nine. Years. All I got left is nine k. So go ahead and delete that team. I got I only got five k left. I'm gonna pay that. I'm gonna try to get on the payment plan for that. Yeah, you can get I'm that down. It. You can pay that this year. Yeah, and I'm paying them. I'm not paying the collection agency. You Refund. Can pay, yeah. You can the, pay uh, gov.com. You yeah, don't have go, to yeah. pay the collection. Right, you can go, go right on go the app. Go to them and do that. Uh, it's a reconsolidation. Look. No, no, do the reconsolidation and then do it based off your current income, and they'll no. give you a lower payment. And it'll be current, so you can get reported on your credit properly. You can pay that five thousand off. I want to pay like fifty dollars a month. Oh well, then you're not gonna pay the five thousand this year. Then if you are only paying fifty dollars a month, I gotta pay it this year. I was just making you a okay. I do a hundred dollars a month. Okay. Do, yeah, if you do a hundred, what do I do? Seventy five. <laughs> You're just only going to cover a th- You know what? Whatever works for you. <laughs> right. What do you right. think I should do? I'm for real. How much? Like 100? Can if you, you really want to pay it off ASAP, then. Just drop. Know, yeah, you just, yeah, try just drop to, like. You might do 300 two, here. Yeah, when three. I get my stimulus, I'm going to put like three on. Yeah, there you go. Only three. 300. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got stuff I need to buy. I need some okay, new Jordans. Okay, okay. No, I'm joking. Oh, Lord. Right. Oh, Lord. No, with me, I, I'm I'm deleting success as well, too. Mm. I'm taking that from it. Not, okay. not necessarily for me, but for my team as a whole. Like, all of us are literally at that cusp where we, too, can be number seven, number five, number one on anybody's list yes. of, mm-hmm. of podcasts and the fact that that came to my inbox during the morning time actually like made my whole day because it was not expected. It was not something I was striving for, mm-hmm. but now it just made me be like, what if I put effort? Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, what if I got out there and I took what I recently learned and pushed the, the brand as a whole? Got it it. You know, so that that's what I'm taking from it. The fact that I see successful podcasts who are under my tutelage and now I want them to be even greater than what they are. Mm. I want to be able to log into Apple and one of my podcasts on my networks are podcasts to watch. Mm. You know, that's yeah. what I want for y'all. Uh, yes, yeah, that's we what want we're that too. Get. We're yeah. speaking that into existence. Yeah, we're going to get that. We're, we're headed there. Yes. Okay. All right. You survived downloading the lead. Yes, he, he survives it every week. He does. Yes, he indeed. Does. And thank you so much for, you know, shedding your light. Yeah, and doing what you do. All the time. Yeah, this is amazing what you're hype. trying to make grow and happen yes. in Milwaukee. And uh, it's important. I think it's important. Yes, always important. Well, don't forget 
to see us wherever we are. Wherever you all are. the all Facebook, the places. Instagram, yep. Gmail, send an email if you Twitter, want to. Subscribe if you there. want to. Yes, all that good all stuff. All under the TDR Podcasting Network. So if you follow them, you follow us. That's right. Uh, there you go. So thank you all for tuning in to episode seventeen as we talk to the producer. Bye. Bye.